One type of threat that folks that operate in the cryptocurrency community may experience would be different types of malware. You can easily get malware on your system by visiting a website, downloading software that is untrusted, installing it on your system, and now you have some attacker code running on your computer. And so there's different things that that code may want to do or those attackers may want to do to your system. One of those would be just intercepting crypto transactions. So you go to a website and it says, you know, it generates a QR code or it gives you an address for you to send funds to. Now, instead of it being that real recipient's address, the malware does a find and replace and puts their address in there. Unbeknownst to you, you think you're sending crypto to a friend or a online store and you're really sending it to the attackers. Another type of malware that you might get on your computer is known as ransomware. What happens is that somehow you get infected with this malware. You may have downloaded some infected software. You may have visited a website and downloaded some files that have been infected, which will then look for files on your computer and encrypt them. And typically you'll see a pop-up box on your computer that says all your files have been encrypted. Here's a Bitcoin address. You must send $100 in Bitcoin or $500 in Bitcoin to this address within the next 48 hours or your files will be gone forever. But if you had backups of those files and you made those backups on a regular basis, you could likely avoid this. You would likely be able to use some antivirus software to remove the ransomware, delete the issues that the files that caused the ransomware to get on your system, and then go and restore your files. But if you don't, if you don't have those backups, you're going to have to pay the criminals. If you end up getting infected with ransomware, one of the first things you should do is just look for the name or for the title or some identifiable information in that ransomware, Google search for that and see if there is a way to bypass it. Some of the older pieces of ransomware out there, some of the security researchers out there have figured out ways to bypass it. But if you don't have backups and there isn't a way to do that, then your only real way to get your files back is to actually pay the criminals. Cryptojacking is the process of a criminal embedding some code in a website that you visit. When you visit that website, not only are you viewing the social media posts or whatever else you're viewing on that site, but in the background on your computer, it's also participating in mining whatever cryptocurrency those criminals are after. Keep in mind that your computer and your browser is not going to be able to mine vast amounts of cryptocurrency. Cryptojacking is meant to infect hundreds of thousands or millions of computers and run that code in your browser simultaneously to be able to give them a lot of compute power, a lot of computing resources in order to generate and mine a little bit of cryptocurrency. Spyware is software that could either be running in your browser or could be running on your system that actually just records and sends information about what you're doing, where you're visiting, and other activities. In most cases, spyware is not actually hacking your accounts or grabbing your cryptocurrency or stealing files from your computer. In general, it's going to be gathering telemetry and other information about you and what you're doing for the purpose of maybe aggregating that data or selling it to somebody else.